In experiment 10, we're going to look at steam distillation, extraction, and infrared spectroscopy. You're already familiar with extraction, but uh, we're going to go over it to make sure you're solid in it. In steam distillation, what we do is we distill water plus another compound. The other compound must be immiscible in water, and what you find is both the water and the other compound drip over together. The boiling point is below the boiling point of either compound, so it will be below 100 degrees if the other compound has a high boiling point. And the proportion of the compounds in the distillate is equal to the proportion of the compound, compound's vapor pressure. So if uh, water has a vapor pressure of, let's say, 720 and the other compound has a vapor pressure of 40, the ratio of the compounds in the mixture will be the same as the ratio of 720 to 40. Now, some mixtures do not distill separately, nor do they, it wouldn't be steam distillation unless you have water in there. And even sometimes when you have water in there, you get what is called an azeotrope. It is different. An azeotrope is a mixture of liquids that boil at a constant temperature without changing composition. At least the distillate doesn't change composition until one of them runs out. And usually, the boiling point is lower than the boiling point of either compound in the mixture. An example is 95.5% aqueous ethanol. This is very easy and cheap to purchase because this is when you distill ethanol, if there's any water present at all, what you distill over is 95.5% ethanol. Ethanol has a boiling point of 79 and water a boiling point of 100. And what you have is a constant boiling mixture that goes over at 79, 78 uh, degrees until either the ethanol or the water runs out. Um, you don't get any separation like you do with a, a mixture of most compounds. You know, if you were if you were distilling two compounds with these boiling points, you would expect to take a, a sample uh, that would be the majority of the lower boiling around 79 and then a majority of the upper boiling around 100. But that doesn't happen. What happens is it distills over. The first drop that comes over is 95.5% ethanol. And until the either ethanol or water runs out, 95.5% ethanol distills over. And uh, that is what's called an azeotrope. There's a huge number of azeotropes. You can look them up in uh, the CRC handbook and other handbooks where you can find out what things azeotrope together. If you have 40% ethanol and you go to distill it, what will happen? 95.5% ethanol distills, and when the ethanol is depleted, then pure water starts distilling. If you have 98% ethanol, 95.5% ethanol distills until the water is depleted, and then you get pure ethanol after that. As I said, there are many, many other azeotropes, but examples of those that will, toluene and water, a combination of 12% ethanol, 85% hexane, and 3% water. Um, I just want you to understand the idea of an azeotrope. I'm not going to expect you to memorize all those things. Uh, the azeotropes are always just determined experimentally, and that's why you would have to look up information on them in the uh, in a handbook somewhere. They are pressure dependent and as you change the pressure the concentration of the uh, components in the azeotrope will change. Steam distillation though is not an azeotrope nor is it a simple distillation. When you have two things that are not soluble in each other they will do something called co-distillation. So Steam distillation is an example of co-distillation. 
We don't usually consider steam distillation to be purification, although it really is a type of purification, but it's considered to be isolation, which is the removal of the compound from its original source. So for example, if you wanted to get lemon oil from lemons, you would take lemon peel and you would mix it with water. You'd probably chop it up and then mix it with water. And what would distill over would be oil of lemon and water together. And so you're removing it from the peel. Um, purification remo moving, is removing impurities. Really, th this is, uh, this is uh, kind of a stupid differentiation here, but I just thought I'd bring it up. Uh, steam distillation uh, is used a lot to remove natural products from plant sources because they're typically high boiling. And with steam distillation, you keep your temperature down below 100 degrees. Uh, if you were to try and distill uh, some liquids that, let's say, are at 200 degrees, they probably will have some de decomposition, if not a lot of decomposition, during uh, a high temperature distillation. The, uh, the liquids are always going to be immiscible in water, and they both distill together. And what you would find is the percentage actually is going to be related to how much of the compound is in there, because there's going to be so much water and as the compound gets distilled away, there's very little left to cause vapor pressure. And so um, uh, the, the percentage of the compound actually starts declining as you distill all the uh, water. Um, a lot of these things that they call uh, essential oils are, uh, of course, they're not soluble in water because they're an oil. They're often used uh, they, we often use steam distillation to obtain them. So like wintergreen, peppermint, all those oils, they get just by boiling the uh, plant in water. Um, so uh, when you get through, you have the combination of the oil and water, and so it's very easy to separate by washing with something like dichloromethane, and it of course, isn't going to be want to be in the water. It goes into the dichloromethane, and then you dry the dichloromethane, and you have your oil. Um, uh, oil content is usually very low, so you have to use a large quantity of water for uh, the small amount of oil. Uh, what's really kind of good about getting these oils out is as you distill, it kind of breaks up the plant material, and it makes oil more available. Because there's going to be very little oil, the boiling point is very close to, but it's below 100 degrees. It never goes, if it goes up to 100, then most likely the oil, either your thermometer's off or the oil is uh, not there anymore. You've distilled over all that there was. Um, I already covered these with you. The temperature never exceeds 100 degrees, which is... Uh, it's still a high temperature, but it's nothing to that will destroy a, most compounds. Uh, water is absorbed into the plant material, and it softens it and loosens the oils out. But realize this, whenever you do steam distillation, you must always have water present. So as you start running out of water, you must have a way to add more water. So the vapor pressure is about the vapor pressure of water plus the vapor pressure of the oil, and when the total vapor pressure, those two, equal atmospheric pressure, well then boiling occurs. Um, the vapor pressures, because they're not miscible in each other, the vapor pressures are approximately what it would be for either the water or the oil separately at that particular temperature. But because the oils usually have a really low, uh, excuse me, high boiling point, the vapor pressure is low at the boiling point of water. And so you don't get that much coming over with the oil. So um, it is not an azeotrope when you do a steam distillation. 
The composition of the distillate does change as the distillation occurs and as the oil concentration starts to diminish. Uh, it's really the amount of oil that you get um, is how much you really are able to loosen from the plant material before it uh, is distilled. There's always going to be some left behind. So um, this is a principle that I've told you, the moles of water over the moles of oil uh, in the distillate are equivalent to the vapor pressure of water over the vapor pressure of the oil. There are two types of steam distillation. One is called internal steam distillation, and uh, you have to have a way of adding water to the flask that's holding the oil and water and doing your distillation from it. And so what you can do is add an addition funnel to a, uh, a round bottom and that allows you to add more water as the water distills away. Then there's external steam and in external steam they actually pipe it into the distillation system. We don't have steam in pipe so we don't use that one. We use internal steam distillation. Here's a picture of it. You've got your round bottom. Uh, this little tube there is an anomaly. You can ignore that. Here is your addition funnel. It's going to be adding water to this. You use a Clayson head to hold this, the addition funnel and the rest of the distillation apparatus. Then there's the still head, the thermometer and thermometer adapter to the condenser, the vacuum adapter, and then the round bottom. It looks very similar to the simple distillation. It just has a, an addition funnel added to the system so that you can add water while the distillation is ongoing. Um, the problems that you can have with steam distillation is that sometimes you have to use a huge amount of water in order to obtain just a few drops. And you cannot use it for compounds which will react with water or which are solu soluble in water. When you are doing your steam distillation, you will notice it is complete because the distillate that is forming in the condenser is going to be clear. It's not going to be cloudy. When there's oil mixed with water, it becomes uh, oil. But uh, as it becomes uh, that you're through, you won't see that oiliness or the cloudiness in the distillate. Then what you have to do is extract. Now, the oil that you are going to be uh, uh, purifying has an impurity in it that can be removed with a basic um, extraction solution. And so what we are going to be doing that. Now what I want you to know, uh, go, go back over in order to understand what type of compound it might be is remember that sodium hydroxide extracts what? Acids or bases. I'm going to pause for a minute and you tell me. Yes, sodium hydroxide will extract acids from an organic solvent. What type of compounds are extracted into aqueous sodium bicarbonate? Again, acids. And then what kind of compounds are extracted into aqueous hydrochloric acid? Bases. So the, the extraction tells you what functional group the compound might have. Now, carboxylic acids are extracted by what? both sodium bicarbonate and sodium hydroxide. Phenols are extracted by what? Only sodium bicarbonate. And then amines are extracted by what? Hydrochloric acid. So those are the extraction principles you need to remember. So what functional groups are acidic? Well, Think about it and say it. Carboxylic acids and phenols. What functional groups are basic? Yes, amines are basic. 
And what about the neutral functional groups? That's everything else, right? All right.